It's interesting that you mention selling out to somebody else rather than going in for a public listing because in the startups that have gone in for a public listing, they're now facing very serious problems when they're being evaluated on a quarter to quarter basis. So again, my own thinking is a public listing is relevant once you start making profits and sustainable profits. Otherwise, an initial valuation may be there, but it's not sustainable. The one business that I'm sure everyone sitting here would uh, identify with very closely is what happens in IPL. And you first ran Pune, now you land Lucknow, you came in third, the team did well, didn't end up the winner. How disappointing was that and how did Pune compare with Lucknow? Pune was a short term franchise, it was for two years. So we had to create or try and create an impact in these two years. So the first year we, we were number seven out of eight, so second last from, I mean, in the, in the list. And the second year we were number two. Uh, disappointed that we didn't win then, uh, but that is sport. Uh, but the fact is that in the space of 12 months we were able to go from being a losing side to being a potentially winning side. When we, cre uh, when we got the Lucknow franchise, the attempt was to create something which is lasting. So we looked at younger players. Most of our players, with the exception of one or two, are very young. So we're looking at building a team for the long term. We were trying to have players who, have, uh, mul who are multifaceted, who can do different things. Uh, and we do believe it sort of worked, that, that strategy worked. The team is very solid, very good. And I think uh, for the first year we did extremely well, but we had a team that could have won. And so yes, it is disappointing that we didn't. When I looked at your investment decisions, given how you are generally perceived as being a very careful investor, you went out and spent more on an IPL team than anybody else, including Gautam Adani. And Mukesh Ammani, but that was back in the day when they bought at a much lower level. How much of that was fascination with the sport? How much of that was an ego play? Kini, I want to own an IPL team no matter what it takes, let's break the bank. You know, uh, I'm very happy that I own an IPL team. But I won't invest 7,000 crores just for that feeling or just for the vanity of owning a team. Forbes, before the, the latest broadcast uh, deals, valued us at 8,100 crores. So which was already 1,100 crores above our investment. I presume we'll be valued at higher rates after this broadcast uh, deal. So we are already doing well. And what I, what was publicly perceived and what I had worked out on paper with the then broadcast situation. Today, our actual investment, the net present value of the investment, will work out to 916 crores. Just 916 crores. So compare that with Delhi Capitals, which went for 1,100 crores for 50%. And this is 916 for uh, 100%. The big difference though is that if it is say a power utility company and some part of the operations are out of line, as a chairman and chief executive you can speak to your team, try and get them to fix it. Now this is cricket. If the team has a bad uh, day out or a series of bad matches, uh, there is nothing that you can do financially in terms of being able to get the team to perform. So how different is it running an IPL team versus any of your other businesses? It's different. It's very different. It's a sport. And in a sport, somebody may have a rush of blood. The other team may play much better. And, uh, but at the end of the day, if you're consistent, or by and large consistent, you will get to the playoffs. And then it's anybody's game at that point in time. But we were not particularly happy with our management team. So we changed the entire management team of Lucknow Supergiants. Everyone we sacked. Because they did not deliver 
there were issues of conflict of interest. So we said, just go. So we will take difficult decisions if we have to take them. That's interesting. I want to talk a bit about your advice uh, to young entrepreneurs in the eastern part of India or across the country who are looking to start out now, given the headwinds that they're facing in terms of macroeconomics, in terms of the ability to raise funding now versus a couple of years ago, the fact that people are far more bottom line focused now than they have been uh, when the eye was more on valuation metrics rather than just on profit numbers. You know, it's a very simple thing. Uh, this is probably as good a time, if not better, to do a startup. Capital is there. Crazy capital is not there. But capital is there. So if it's a sensible idea, if it's workable, you will get financing. Uh, you will not get financing which will give you access to a to a Mercedes car or something in the first instance, uh, possibly. But you will get enough capital to carry on with your business and grow it to the next level. And if you've done well, then you'll get the next round of funding. So just believe in yourself and be true to your vision.